Drosera or sundews are another really cool genus of carnivorous plant I love growing here at Redleaf Exotics. And although there are not nearly as many as Nepenthes in the greenhouse, I thought I would share the beautiful plants with you. You guys have been asking to see some sundews and they're looking really nice. So let's dig into the beautiful world of Drosera. <music> So the first one we'll talk about here today is this beautiful capensis, a great beginner's plant. They come from South Africa and really easy and rewarding to grow here in the greenhouse. They're pretty much like weeds. They get all these long tentacles and they do catch a lot of bugs. When little bugs land on these leaves, they actually curl up around it and envelop around the body and then they suck up all the nutrients. Really cool. If you were to put this under a time-lapse camera, and you know, put a bug on here, you'd see really fast the tentacles wrap around their prey. There are some that are curled up, but this would probably be my first suggestion for a Drosera to grow in a house or a greenhouse. Very easy, no trouble, very minimal effort. All the Drosera that I grow in the greenhouse are constantly sitting in RO water or rainwater. We don't use any tap water, any water high in minerals, and we do fertilize them. I've been spraying the Drosera with organic fish emulsion, which is ground up fish, at a capful per gallon. I spray it in a sprayer over their leaves and it keeps them so happy. And I love that it's organic. Um, a lot of growers do use Maxi, but uh, to keep Drosera happy, I'd say live insects are best, but the fish emulsion does keep them really robust. And I do apply that every two weeks to a month. It really depends on how I'm feeling, if I miss it, um, and what the dress hairs are looking like. This one over here is another capensis, and if you notice the first one I showed you, it had more red in the leaves, it's a red form. This one is an all white form. It doesn't get any color, it just looks like a bunch of dew on green leaves. Again, I have this one in a nice dish. There's only one pinguicula in here that found its way that's grown with them, but they did just flower and I laid all the seed pods on top of the soil and that will make a lot more once they start sprouting. But a beautiful way to display them and you could grow them right inside like this. You just need to have this sitting in water all the time. This one here is from Australia. It's called Drosera prolifera. It just flowered and it's actually producing a lot of little babies at the end of its flower uh, stalks. So that's cool, cool for propagating. I noticed these ones Actually, a lot of the tropical Drosera that I'm growing here, I don't give them very strong light. I do give them the Mars Hydro SP3000, which is a very strong light, but usually when there's sun coming in the greenhouse uh, or the sunnier parts where I grow fly traps, these don't do as well there. They actually like it a little more on the shadier side, and they seem to produce their best color in traps. Every time I put Prolifera and Shizandra in a brighter situation. They just declined and didn't do good. So I do keep this one and its other two sisters from Queensland in a little shadier spot in the greenhouse. But they do get the supplemental lighting and that does help them. This is another one of the three sisters that I just mentioned. There's Drosera prolifera, Shizandra, and Adelaide. They grow in Queensland. This one here is probably the more difficult or challenging one. Um, sometimes it just doesn't seem as happy, but then it gets in its mode and I kind of ignore it and it does produce a lot of offsets and look really good. It's actually looking beautiful now and it does have a ton of runners that are coming up all over this pot. I actually went through and divided a lot of the plants out of here earlier this year and now it's shooting back up a lot more of its little babies. Here's another pot. Let's see if I could get this in front of the camera for you guys but you could see these ones are cute coming up through the moss. And I just love how large um, and kind of oval the leaves are. Really, really neat. And here's the third sister from Queensland. This one is Drosera Adelaide, and this one has more long uh, leaves, but still kind of a wide margin and covered in those sticky tentacles. I love the red flowers on Drosera. Uh, Adelaide. Beautiful, beautiful plants. Very vigorous and they clump a lot. 
these plants turn into huge mounds in just a short amount of time. And when it is summer and the light's really strong, this plant doesn't seem to do as good and it doesn't seem to like heat as much. So I do keep this cooler and a little more on the shadier side under grow lights and it seems to thrive. This one here is probably one of my most favorite. This is Dracera Magnifica from Brazil. And this was only found a few years ago and it was actually discovered on Facebook in the background of an image with two people smiling, like way in the background. Somebody saw it, they're like, what is that? And that's how it was discovered through a photo on Facebook. Mind blowing, but it's made its way into cultivation. Um, a lot of people were saying you could not do these by seed. A lot of them are tissue culture, but I'm sure, I think somebody has grown them from seed actually. But again, I'm not a Dracera freak or geek. I love them, but I'm in the Nepenthes a lot. Really cool plant though, and it gets massive. It is one of the largest growing Dracera there are. This one has done it extremely well, and I have it potted in uh, Akadama in some sand, which is really different. You know, a lot of people are growing Dracera and peat in sand or sphagnum. This one I just decided to throw it right in Akadama, and it's actually growing really good. It has some side shoots coming off the bottom, and it has grown really big in a short amount of time. So I'm just gonna leave it in this Akadama and let's see what it does. I'd hope to flower it and maybe make some seeds one day, but let's see where it goes. It's really a spectacular plant when it does get some more size to it. This is another one of the larger growing Drosera. This one probably gets right up there with Magnifica. This is Drosera regia. And this one can be more difficult for growers and they do like it cooler, but really bright. Um, I've had a couple in the greenhouse prior to this and I killed them outright. This one was given to me by some friends and it's been doing exceptionally well. So I'm just gonna keep ignoring it, leave it in its water and let it do its thing. But this plant can get massive when it is mature. Um, in the wild, there are not many of these left. They're very popular in cultivation, but in the wild, there are not a lot. So a really epic and cool plant to grow if you can master it. Definitely not for beginners, but one worth trying once you get the hang of them. This one's still kind of looking good, but I wanted to touch on tuberous sundews, which are more Mediterranean growing. These plants are used to growing in the winter when it's more mild and wet. And then they usually experience dry, warm summers, and that's when they'll go dormant down into their little tubers they have underground. And once it starts to get cool and moist again, uh, they'll come back up and produce their leaves. This one here is Drosera cystiflora, and it gets a beautiful, huge, compared to the plant, uh, pink flower when it's ready. Uh, all the other tuberous sundews are gone to bed for the summer, but this one is still pushing strong. Really neat. And this is also another uh, variety, the tuberous types that I would suggest only for more advanced growers once you get the hang of these. While we're over here, I thought I'd talk about the Mars Hydro SP3000 that I have over a lot of the Drosera. Um, this is a really good light. It is so powerful, but it does have a dimming switch on the back so you can lower or brighten. I can't even look into it, it's so bright. Um, the intensity, which is awesome. Now, in the winter, I will have these on for around 13 hours um, of strong light. And now that it's warmer, we have a lot more light. I'll only put this on early in the morning and maybe for a few hours at night. Uh, and then in the dead of summer, I probably won't even use it unless I'm working in here. But the Drosera love it. When I talked earlier about Capensis and some of the other ones not liking very intense light, it's interesting because they can handle the intense light um, from the grow light over here in the shady corner. But if I were to put these in a sunnier part of the greenhouse where you're getting that sun and that heat, some of them just do not like it, especially Adelaide. But that's just in my experience. If you are growing tropical plants, especially Nepenthes, carnivorous plants, whatever, the Mars Hydro SP3000 is a sick light. I mean, these things are so bright. I probably have them too close. I could probably just put these up in the ceiling and light the whole greenhouse that way. But I do have them targeted for dimming over certain um, collections here in the greenhouse, mainly the Helium Fora and the Draceras. I thought I'd pop outside and show you guys one last plant here. This is a native Dracera filiformis, and these could be found growing in Florida in some of the lower states. Um, here in Tennessee, they do beautiful. We're in zone seven. You could probably grow them outside in zone six, 
and I keep these constantly moist to wet here in our bog gardens. And if you wanna see a little more in depth on how I care for the bog gardens and what these are made of, you can check out the last video where I did the bog garden tour. But Philiformis is really easy. It loves growing out in wet, full sunshine. It produces beautiful pink flowers. And I love how all the leaves just are erect and come straight up. When this whole bed fills up, there's a ton of them down there. It just glistens, especially in the evening light. It's really spectacular. Well, that is pretty much all I got on Drosera. Just to recap, most Drosera just wanna be sitting in water all the time. The main mix that most growers are using is a combination of peat and perlite. They can be growing in sphagnum. You saw the Drosera Magnifica growing in Akadama, but I suggest peat and sand for a really good all around mix for them. And if you're gonna get into those tuberous ones, just make sure you give them their dormancy in the drier, warmer months. Other than that, Drosera are pretty easy. Great plants to have in the collection and really nice to admire and show to your friends. I'm Dom here at Redleaf Exotics. I'll catch you next week on another one of our plant videos. See you guys later.